All right, so we have our IndexedDB database set up and open. So what we want to do now is have a way to add to it. Okay, so we're going to be able to do that through this customer form. So if we go to our main.js file, we want to create a new function called add customer. Um, and we're going to create it outside of the document ready function. So down here, we'll have a function called add customer. All right, now this function is going to be called when we submit the form because we have this form handler. Okay, so on submit, it goes to add customer. Now the first thing we want to do is get the values that the user types in in these fields. Okay, and we're going to do that with jQuery. We'll create variables for them. Okay, variable name. And then we'll use jQuery to grab um, the field with the ID of name. Let's just make sure we have that. Okay, input type. Okay, so we don't. So we need to add an ID to these input fields. Okay, and then um, we need to use the value. We need to use, I'm sorry, the val method to get the actual value typed in. Okay, we'll do the same thing for the email. All right, now when you're doing, when you're interacting with the database, you need to use transactions. Okay, so we create a, a variable called transaction, and we want to set that to db dot transaction. Okay, and then we want to put in the the object stores that we want to use. In this case, it's going to be just customers, but you can see that this is an array, and you can add more to this if needed. All right, so that's the first parameter, and the next is going to be read write. Okay, now if, if the transaction is going to involve changing the database at all, so adding or updating, you want to use read write. If it's just to select, uh, just to display items, then you could use read only. All right, so next, we're going to ask for the object store. Okay, so we'll create another variable and we'll call it store and set that to transaction dot object store and then the name of it which is going to be or well, which is customers all right and then we're going to uh, define a customer that we want to enter so we'll create a variable called customer and that's going to be equal to an object Okay, so name, uh, what we want to do is insert the name that the person types in the form, which is represented up here with the name variable. Okay, so name, name, and then email, email. Okay, so that gives us basically just an, a customer object. Then we want to perform the add. Okay, and we do that with a request. So request is going to be equal to our store variable dot add and then in here customer. Okay, so this is obviously coming from here. Okay, so that's going to perform the add and then we're going to get we want our success and error callbacks. Okay, so here we're going to say request dot on success equals function ok 
okay and basically all I want to do after a user is entered is uh, redirect to the home page okay so we're going to do a simple Java JavaScript redirect window.location.href and we want to go to index.html okay now for the error function and what we're going to do here we'll just uh, I guess we'll just have an alert that'll say that the user wasn't entered sorry the customer was not added and then I want to do a console as well and I want the actual error so um, console log so you can use I'll use double quotes I'll use single quotes so console dot log error uh, and then we're going to say e dot target dot error dot name and that'll give us the exact error <clears throat> all right so that should do it uh, let's save this and let's go ahead and open up the console okay show customers is not defined we already know that uh, let me just comment that out for now okay so you can see the database is open okay now let's go to add customer and we'll say Ted Ted Smith add an email address and let's just see what happens alright so we didn't get any error we got the redirect now we can check our um, resources All right, and if we go to our index DB, go to name, you can see we have Ted Smith. Email, we have his email. All right, so that works. Adding works. Now what we need to do is get our customers to display in this table. And we want to do that with the show customers function. So let's create that now. Oh, my cursor sometimes turns into this when I'm using uh, my recording software, so I apologize, it's a little weird, um, but it should go away actually. Alright, so let's go ahead and uncomment right here, show customers, and let's build that, that function. I'm going to pass in an event variable. All right, so what we want to do is we want a transaction to display the customers, just like we did up here. So let's I can actually copy this. All right, now the difference here is we're just showing customers, so we don't need write access. So we're going to change this to read only. Okay, and just like we did up here, we'll create the, the object store variable. Okay. Now we're going to use uh, a, a method called open cursor. All right, so basically we're going to use a cursor to iterate through all of our customers. All right, so it basically is a loop. All right, so we need to create an index variable for that. So variable index um, equals store dot index and we need to put the name of the index 
we're going to use name okay the customer's name now in order to do that we have to actually create a, a an index up here inside of our on upgraded needed function okay so so right under here I'm going to use my OS object and we're going to say create index and then we want the name which is going to be name um, we have to actually put name for the first and second parameters okay and then we want um, we need to specify if this value should be unique and since it's a name it's not going to be unique okay because two people can have the same name create index for name all right let's go back down here so now what we need to do is build the output so if we look at our page, we have a table, we have a table heading, okay, we have a row with headings. So what we need to create are rows with columns, all right, and the column will have um, and the ID, the name, email address, and also a delete link, all right. So that's what we need to build. So we're going to start by just initializing a variable called output, okay. Oops, we don't need that. We need var output, and I'm just going to set it to nothing. Okay. Now what we're going to do is use that index variable to use the open cursor method. So open cursor dot on success equals function. All right, so in here, um, we're going to create another variable called cursor, and we're going to set it equal to e dot target dot result. Okay, and we'll say if cursor if it exists, then in here we can build our output. All right, so we'll take that output variable and we want to append to it because remember we created it up here we just want to keep adding to it and you can do that with plus equals all right so what do we want to put in here we want our row so basically whatever we put in here is going to happen uh, for every customer that it iterates through okay so if there are five customers this is going to run five times all right so we want to create a table row and I'm going to give this row a class of actually you know what let's add that afterwards because I don't want to confuse you it can be a little tough to read when you're going in and out of JavaScript concatenating concatenating and things like that um, so yeah okay so we have the TR tag and I'm just going to keep building on to this. Instead of making one long string, I'm just going to keep appending. All right. Uh, and then inside of the TR, we want columns, obviously. So we're going to do a TD. Uh, TD. All right. So the first TD is going to be the ID. Now to get this. We want to concatenate. So we're going to use the cursor variable. We're going to say cursor dot value and then dot whatever field that you want. So we could do name, email, or ID. Okay, so we want the ID for the first column. And let's just keep on adding to this. So output append the next column I can actually just copy this okay so the next column is going to be our name okay so basically oh, 
need our quotes here. Okay, so this is going to be the name. And let me just copy this, make it easier. This will be the email. And then here, we're just going to have a delete link. It's not going to go to anything yet. All right. And I actually want to put these, the I, the, um, the name and the email into a span tag because we're going to use this later so that we can add that content editable attribute so that we can actually just click on it and edit the text. Okay, span there and span here. All right. Okay, so down here we want to close out the table row. Okay, we just want to make this an ending tag. All right, and then here we just want to say cursor dot continue. Okay, so basically it'll keep going until there are no more entries left. And then finally we just want to output the output. Okay, so we're going to do we want the customers actually let me go back to the index page all right so we didn't add the we need to um, add our ID to the T body because this is directly where we're gonna put this code okay so we want an ID of customers okay and then here we can get it customers uh, we're gonna say customers dot HTML which basically lets us insert whatever we want and we're going to insert the output variable. All right, so let's cross our fingers, reload, get this console open. All right, perfect. So we have our ID, name, email address, delete link. Okay, now we can't click on this and edit or anything because we haven't we haven't done that yet, but we will get to that. So let's go ahead and try to add one more customer. Say uh, Jeff Johnson. Say JJJ at Gmail. Perfect. Okay, so we add it, redirects us, shows it right away. All right, so things are looking good. In the next video, um, we're going to add delete functionality and also clearing the entire list.